One of the most highly anticipated final tables of the year. The stage has been set here. It's the WPT World Championship final table. And we are down to the final six players with $4.1 million up top for the eventual champion. What a week of poker it has been here, mainly the Encore Ballroom. Now the entire poker world watching these final six players. Henry Kilbane alongside Kevin Rabichow on the call as the players get stuck in, all guaranteed to be poker millionaires regardless of where they finish today. But Kevin, coming into this, we've got some very interesting ICM slash ladder implications in effect. This could be a, this could be a fun one. Yeah, after the extremely long broadcast that I know you <laughs> were loving every minute of, uh, we've got a situation that you don't see very often at a final table, which is, you know, an overwhelming chip lead, also kind of an overwhelming second place, uh, and four players who are really going to be keen to take uh, any pay jump that they can with, with this pay structure. So coming into today... Most Coupe <laughs> titles. Benny Glaser coming in with 83 big blinds. Overwhelming chip leader. Had the time of his life the other day. Playing that unofficial final table of nine into the early hours of the morning. Finished 32. around 6.30 a.m. local time. Kind of felt like it was going to be over and done with in the space of an hour or two, that final table, but the short stacks kept on doubling up and surviving, spiking one out as left, right, and center. That's what I was wondering. As the chip leader coming in, only player that can really cause some significant damage, if you will, be Colton. Uh, sorry, oh, Colton. Uh, Elliot, you don't. In second place, so you get 51 big blinds. And then we have a huge drop off to Adam Adler, coming in third in chips with 17 bigs. Frank Fanaro coming in with 13 big blinds. JC Moser. Yeah, with 12 big lines in the shortest stack at the table. The Colton Blomberg coming in with just nine big lines. So, oh, awesome. with the insane difference between Benny and Elliot at the top of the counts, are all of these other short stacks just playing a waiting game, just trying to see, you know, who busts and if I can stay alive, ladder a few spots? Are they currently in a spot where they're just playing for second? Is there any world where they can? really go after Benny and play for first, or are they just having to wait this one out? Yeah, it's it's going to be a really interesting dynamic, probably for this entire, like that, in, at least until we get down to three players. I'm also just noticing with Elliot on Benny's direct left, there's going to be fewer ways for Benny to, to totally dominate, right? For him to, you're not going to see those situations where he's just open raising all in. Uh, and all the short stacks are folding, hoping that someone picks up a monster and, and gets cooler, right? You're going to see a lot of min raising, probably more post-flop play. And between the short stacks, they are to some extent, like, uh, I don't want to say playing for third, but, but there's a huge amount of incentive for them to, to ladder. Um, I'm most personally interested in seeing how Elliot navigates this type of situation because a lot of players in his spot would just sit out until they get second. Right. And I, I don't think, I mean, we're already seeing him play a pot in position here um, with pocket sevens. I think very standard for him to just be calling an open and, and generally playing safe and generally trying to play a small pot here. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Elliot doesn't strike me as the type of guy to kind of stay handcuffed, play KG and wait to get heads up. His presence at the table, not only at the unofficial final table of nine, but whenever he was at the feature table, just seemed incredibly dialed in, really focused, like wasn't giving much away, doesn't mind playing big pots. There was a big hand very early on the FT where he was second in chips and folded ace king to a jam. Um, but I completely understand the reasons for that. He was two of nine. Benny just open shoved and there's a bunch of sub 10 big blind stacks. Kind of a similar situation here, except this time, Elliot is comfortably in second and has really done a great job of distancing himself from the rest of the pack. And this one 
Going to go to Benny as he gets checked down. So a couple of hands going his way straight off the bat. Trip leader taking up two hands in a row. We're giving away $50 to the first 100 people who sign up on WPTGlobal.com. It's real easy. Step one, go to WPTGlobal.com. Step two, use bonus code YT78. Step three, deposit at least $1. Act quickly. It's only for the first 100 people who sign up. Just with that, JC oh, yeah, Musa yeah. now down to less than 10 big lines. Just following his big. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, this big line anti format is incredibly painful when you're one of the short stacks and you're playing six handed. I mean, as we get down even to five and four handed, it's going to be really expensive uh, just to pay your big line and fold one round, right? Uh, so there is more incentive to see those short stacks uh, just move all in and try, and try and pick up some chips. A quick look at the pay jumps there, as Kevin was alluding to, just being patient as one of the sub-10 okay. big blind stacks to potentially ladder 300,000. Look at that. Nope. Benny way out in front of 91 bigs. Elliot currently sat on 48. Frank, you have the uh, black behind that? No. Okay. Are we gonna add time? To the Apologies about that. Brief pause there, ladies and gentlemen. Quick look at the chip counts as we just saw. So four sub 20 big blind stacks. Adam Adler kind of comfortably in third, but 17 big blinds, 90 minute clock. Frank Fanaro on 11, JC Musa on 10, Colton Blomberg with nine big blinds. And I believe gonna be in the big in the next hand. So gonna have to put in 20% of his chips in the big run with that big blind ante. But yeah, just going back to those payouts, Kevin, 300k ladder straight off the bat between sixth and fifth. And for a lot of these guys, uh, the 300k alone would be the biggest, best live score for Frank, second best live score for JC, best live score for Adam, best live score for Colton and best life score for Elliot. So the only player who, this is the pay jump between sixth and fifth, is bigger than their career best score. This is this is how much this money, this means to these guys. This is the biggest final table of all of their careers. And, you know, I mean, good luck. Bright lights, big stage, the entire poker world watching. Played 18 hours the other day to get down to this final table. They've all done what they can hope is enough for the poker world to, I mean, look, you come in here, you bow in, bow out in sixth or fifth. Here's what it is, it's gonna sting for a while, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, it's always disappointing to show up, especially when there's this big production to show up to the final table and, and exit early, but soon enough you remember you just want 100 buy-ins in, <laughs> in the biggest tournament of the year. It's not so bad. WPT 20th anniversary record breaking WPT World Championship. Oh, oh my word. So I, w I was wrong clearly about my guess at how Benny would be approaching these preflop spots because here he is making a big open jam, assuming that Elliot is almost never going to have a hand strong enough to call, and then it just gets through against all the other players, and, and this might turn out to be a very costly misstep. Elliot, 50 bigs, effective, makes the call, and everyone is going to be on their feet. As you see the looks on all the other players' faces, the shorter stacks witnessing first the second playing a chip lead pot, hand number three of this final table as Benny calls over the, to the rail asking for an ace. Kevin, we saw an ace folded already. 
Benny, five cards away from doubling up Elliot, and more importantly, Elliot would have position on Benny and really get to play the role of table captain should he hold here with the pocket kings. Talk about career-defining hand being played out right now. Watching all the short stacks. Sweat this one on the side. 10, 7, 5. So far, so good for Elliot's pocket kings. Backdoor Broadway. Always a potential for Benny. Good news is Benny can't be dead on any turn. And the diamonds changes nothing. Elliot one card away from being the WPT World Championship chip leader with six left. And he is going to hold with the Kings. His rail goes insane, Kevin. How about that? There's got to be some five balls out there. There's got to be some one ball sweats. <laughs> Benny with the open jam, running into the top of range. And and I do wonder, I mean, you can see, obviously, Benny distraught at, at this result, and perhaps, you know, realizing one of those 2 or 3% outcomes that he was just assuming, oh, this is never going to happen, like he's never going to wake up with a hand that can call. Um, but you do wonder if, if Benny prepared specifically for, for situations like this, where, you know, Elliot is, is on his direct left, uh, there's a potentially very costly downside to these open shoves. Because you do often, you go into a final table with a big chip lead. I, I've, I've run into this sort of situation myself, where you just expect, like, oh, I'm going to get spots like this, where I can just run them over, right? I'm going I'm to be the one opening every hand. I'm going to have spots to open jam. And every now and then, maybe situations like that come up where it, it was not such a strong idea. Um, but you forget, and, y you know, you just stick with your instinct, like, oh, I'm going to run this table over. What, what could go wrong? How does this one play out now, Kevin? Because you talk about the study work that would have been put in in Benny's shoes, <coughs> keeping in mind that Elliot was going to be on his left second in chips, playing around 50 bigs. Mm -hmm. Now, Benny's down to 30 big blinds. Elliot's on his direct left with 100 bigs. Yeah. Is he as handcuffed as everyone else? He's he's perhaps more handcuffed. Benny's going to be very restricted here in what he's allowed to open. We just saw him opening queen seven offsuit from the hijack. Now we might be seeing him fold, you know, a top 15% hand from, from that same seat in the, the next orbit around. So he's going to have to very selectively enter pots. Um, I am curious if that's, you know, like his, his approach, not everyone likes to just step back and let the chip leader do their thing. Sometimes they like to, to fight back as best they can, you know, open and light four bed or, or try, and, try and play the big pots and really shoot for first. But I, I do think that Benny's going to really tone it down in, in this situation. What a start to this final table for the Canadian. Came into the unofficial final table of nine, two of nine, and had to deal with Benny running over the table until we got down to the final seven, and then we saw Elliot win a couple of key pots. The main one being winning a flip to get us from seven-handed play to the official final table of six. See him nursing that freshly built tower. Little decisions like this one here in the big blind, these are the types of, of ICM-related decisions that I think, you know, maybe don't get as much attention. This. Right here, this is already sort of an act of defiance from Benny to, to some extent, right. where he's saying, okay, like, yeah, you opened under the gun, but I've got 40 big blinds still in my, in my stack. I'm not afraid to play a medium-sized pot here. Uh, I'm just going to call. I'm going to be able to withstand whatever moderate pressure that you put um, forward in this hand. Whereas just a couple of hands ago, I didn't comment on it, but we saw Adam Adler folding the big blind with Jack-10 offsuit to an open, right? So... Totally different chip scenario when you're sitting on 15 big blinds. Calling the big blind can can really put your stack at risk. Here, Benny has 40 big blinds. He's saying, oh, it's OK. I can I can call the big blind. But I, I, I like this play from Elliot. He's, he's putting a lot of pressure on right away. I, I wouldn't be shocked even to just see a gut shot fold the flop here. Um, but let's see what Benny decides. Yeah, I mean, straight off the bat, 5.2 million into 8.8, .8, as you already mentioned, really leveraging that chip lead. 
putting Benny in a tough spot where he doesn't even get to realize the equity of that flop gut shot. So Elliot now with 163 million chips. We're giving away $50 to the first 100 people who sign up on WPTGlobal.com. It's real easy. Step one, go to WPTGlobal.com. Step two, use bonus code YT78. Step three, deposit at least $1. Act quickly. It's only for the first 100 people who sign up. We just saw our shortest stack, Colton Blomberg go through the blinds. He's now down to six and a half bigs. 300k ladder between fifth and sixth. See how this one plays out. Early drama, Kevin. I tell you what, if you had asked me earlier on at breakfast, how do you think this final table is going to play out? I, I would not have predicted the first v second all in inside the first orbit of play. I think you would have gotten really good odds on that side bet before this final table started. Panaro had the absolute pleasure of commentating on that young man for the better part of 18 hours the other day. We're still finding the subtle jokes at 6 a.m. He's up laughing, loving life as Colton finds it on the button. Colton Blomberg down to his final 10 million chips. Just north of six big blinds. And it's an interesting decision for Benny here. He, he obviously has to worry. If I call here, I've got the chip leader behind who can overcall or potentially three bet all in in a situation where I never really want to put my stack at risk light. So like how many hands do I even play here in the first place? Do I just fold and let, and let the chip leader take care of this button jam? But I, I, he's giving it some real thought. He doesn't seem to me like the player who's who's trying to pass on spots, right? So it is just a decision here now. Do I want to call? Do I want to click it back to disincentivize the chip leader from coming along? Do I potentially even just want to go all in and really shut out the chip leader from this pot? All the options available for Benny. Rough start to this final table, but does have both the live and online experience to kind of just compose himself and bring this one back. He is going to get out of the way. Discipline lay down from Benny in the small and Colton going to pick up the blinds and the big blind ante. And just with that, now tied with JC Mosa at the bottom of the chip counts, both playing around 14 million apiece. That's a pretty good pull. We'll take yeah. that. Picking up forty percent of his stack uncontested. <laughs> Two nights ago, the incredible field of 2,960 entries played down to the final six players, and I tell you what, it wasn't easy. It took more than seven hours after the elimination of Rami Awera in tenth place to reach the final six. It was Lucas Foster that was eliminated in seventh place around 6 a.m. So late night, I expect a lot of sleep for these guys yesterday, although with the adrenaline rushing through their blood until 6, 7 a.m., catching up with friends, family, to let them know that they had made the final table. Maybe they didn't get much sleep yesterday, Kevin. It's definitely uh, it's a stressful experience to have that much attention on you. And not, not only that, but to probably have played five or six days consecutive leading up to that of day course. that you're describing, right? I mean, they, they would have gone into that day already totally fatigued. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I it's think we're going to see Elliot do something here. He, go, he goes with just a call. Oh, oh. Frank Fennaro waking up with ace-10-0 in the big blind. Sub-10. Hold on. He's going to move his final 13, sorry, 15.5 million in the middle. This is just an absolute disaster for Benny. Yeah, Benny, Benny correctly assessing here that when Elliot calls here in the small blind, he's still got plenty of very strong hands in his range. King-9 suited on the lower end for sure, and he's going to have to think about this math problem for a little bit. But... Benny was by no means in a spot there where he could, you know, 
take his price and, and try and uh, and try and enter that pot light. He has to respect Elliot's range here for sure. Also has to respect the range of Frank in the big blind as well, moving all in against the bottom open and small blind flat of Elliot. Is there like a world where Frank kind of works as an aid for Elliot? Elliot kind of wants to keep these shorter stacks around for as long as possible so he can continue to just abuse the ICM situation between himself and Benny, who's currently second in chips. I, I think that that's more relevant in situations where we're not dealing with three or four other short stacks already at the table, pretty much no matter what happens in this hand. Like, it, Elliot... Not only does he have a math problem, he has this kind of future game problem to, to dissect, right? If I win this pot, what's the stack distribution I'm creating? If I lose this pot, what's the stack distribution I'm creating? Uh, and, and if that losing scenario was really detrimental, then yeah, you, you'd certainly have a case. But he would just be in a spot where Frank's got about 20, 22 big blinds. Everyone else is still pretty short. It's a fine spot for him, and he does end up calling for that reason, I guess. He's come to the conclusion that the math says yes kevin makes the call with the king nine of clubs and we can see 60 40 for frank fanaro's tournament life came into this final table five of six so i do apologize four of six just 13 bigs everyone else gonna sweat this one for a potential 300k ladder wow. <laughs> Five, three, deuce, all spades. Frank with the ace of spades in hand. <coughs> Taking away a third of Elliot's outs. Now drawing to four outs twice. Six of hearts on the turn. Changes nothing, Frank still with the best of it. It's never easy, is it, Kevin? Always a sweat going into the biggest river card of Frank Fanaro's career. Seven of diamonds rolling off, and Frank with the full double. Not only does he get the full double, Kevin, that has got to be one of the rowdiest rails I've heard in a long time. That's big. Yeah, and he, he's just got to be thrilled. S situationally, everything we've been talking about, right? Like, he's got to be thrilled to separate himself from the pack a little bit.